children of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. spirit. My friends, as we come to this Eucharistic celebration, we call to mind our need for God's mercy, forgiveness, and love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The church going to sing, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> <laughs>
let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleadings of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> spoken who formed me as his servant from the womb that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him and I made glorious and I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord and my God is now my strength it is too little the Lord says for you to be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Sacrifice or offering you wish not. 
Good morning, church. Good morning, Father. I invite you to come to the throne of grace with me as I have a little prayer music. <clears throat> Gracious and mighty God, wonder-working God, God of our salvation, on this Sunday morning, O oh God, we pray that your word will go forth and not return void, but do the work that it's purpose to do. So now, in this time and in this space, O oh God, we pray that the words of my mouth, all oh, the very meditations of my heart, might be found acceptable in your sight for you and you alone are my rock and my redeemer. Amen. And all God's children said. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, Father. My name is Father Maurice Nutt. I'm a redemptress priest stationed in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, I've been good friends with your pastor, Father Fisher, even before he was Father Fisher. I knew him as a seminarian, and I'm just so blessed by his life, his ministry, especially how he inspires young people to remain in the church and faithful to the church. Why don't you just join me in giving it up for your pastor? <laughs> if I didn't say that I've known the director of pastoral life here for many, many years. He and his beautiful wife, Christine, I, I want to just say he has been a blessing not only to me and so many other priests, but I know the blessing he has been to this church family. Let's give it up for Deacon James. <laughs> We had a good time in this space yesterday. I don't know if you were here or if you missed it, but we came for the preparation for the National Black Catholic Congress, and it was a time to learn, to reflect, and to hope for a future within our church. And I want to bless and thank all those who made that day possible yesterday. There is a word for the Lord for you today. I would like to shine my homiletical spotlight on a message simply titled, When the Word of God Becomes Real. Amen. When the Word of God Becomes Real. Amen. Beloved, today we celebrate ordinary time. It was just last week that you saw Christmas trees up and you saw <laughs> nativity scene and you come and everything it seemed like it's wiped out and it's gone to green which we know is the color of ordinary time in our Catholic church but I really don't know Father Norman why the church calls it ordinary because it's much more than that it's extraordinary because the readings the scripture begins to reflect on the mission of Jesus Christ and I don't know about you, but his mission was anything but ordinary. Amen. 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 And so today, Pope Francis a few years ago has made this Sunday Word of God Sunday. And you might think it's strange for the Holy Father to tell Catholics this is a special Sunday to reflect on the Word of God. But me knowing my Pope and he knowing you Catholics, knowing that for many of us, and it's been said by our Protestant siblings that seems like Catholic folk don't study the Word of God. We don't know Scripture perhaps as they do. And, and, and I want to just put that point in, in practice right here. Just that case in point was to say, many of you, if you had to find your Bibles, I'm talking about you Catholics, we would have to find it and we would have to <laughs> blow the dust off of it. Because Lord knows it sits on your coffee tables and that's about it, you know. But he's telling us we need to study God's word. We need to be in God's word. We need to stand on God's word. And most importantly, we need to live God's word. Amen. I wish I had an amen, right? Amen. amen. The word of God, it empowers us. It's a light for our path. It, it guides us. The word of God instills in us. And, and we must study it, as the Bible says, to show ourselves approved. Amen. amen. And so in putting this Word of God Sunday forth, let me just tell you, you Catholics know the Word of God more than you think you know. You really do. Because, let me check this out. You go to Mass, don't you? Where almost every part of your responses in Mass are found in the Bible. Our whole liturgy is based on the Word of God. Check this out. It said it in the scripture reading from John's Gospel today. 
we said, it said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Every single Sunday when Father holds up the Eucharist, holds up the precious body and blood, he says, behold, the Lamb of God. And when, when you say, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and it shall be, and my soul shall be healed. That's what that centurion said. I wanted to put my point across that everything we do in the word of God, we do in our liturgy. We hear about today John the Baptist, and this is unlike the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and John. Y'all mind if I just teach this thing before I preach this? <laughs> because you see, John the Baptist, he's retelling in John's account what happened at the River Jordan when he baptized his cousin Jesus. And, and he says some strange things, Deacon James, that is a bit befuddling for me. It, it, it's, it just There's cognitive dissonance because John says in the word of God that he knew not Jesus. The same John that was the child of Zechariah and Elizabeth, and, and when the old Elizabeth should have been going to the retirement home, should have been in the nursing home, she ended up in the maternity ward. She should have been taking Jerichon. She was having morning sickness. This, this old woman, somebody say old woman. Oh, old woman. Old woman, God says that you're going to have a baby, and the word says because nothing, I mean absolutely nothing, is impossible with God. And, and so when she was heard to be pregnant and Mary came to visit her cousin, all of a sudden, John said he knew not this Jesus, yet while he was pre-knocking a, a natal, when he was in his mama's womb, he started kicking her stomach and he saw her. Mary came. I mean, it was a meeting of the bellies. Bellies were all the to see all of a sudden. And I didn't say how he began his ministry and started talking, saying that he was saying, even though he couldn't talk, behold the Lamb of God. Amen. <laughs> even before he came. And, and when he said he knew him not, he says, but the Lord spoke to me. And, and you have to understand, John went away early on in his life to, to the wilderness, to, to the desert. He became a hermit. So, you know, John didn't show up to the family reunion. He wasn't there for birthdays and celebrations and parties. So, yes, quite frankly, he did not have a personal relationship with Jesus. But all of a sudden, he says, the Spirit told me, you will know him when that Holy Spirit comes hovering over him. You will know him for yourself. He says, you see, the reason that I baptize with water, because someone who is greater than I, I must decrease while he increase. I'm not even worthy to kneel down and unstrap his sandal. This man of God is going to come and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. You have to understand who this Jesus is. And I want you to know that when understanding the baptism, of the Lord and understanding when he recognizes who Jesus is. You have to understand Christ's presence among us is a time for new beginnings, an invitation to walk from the shadows of hatred and mistrust to the light of understanding and peace, a chance for healing of our brokenness and mending of our relationships. <laughs> You know, I don't know about you, but in these past few years when we have been plagued by both the coronavirus and racial reckoning, when our economy was tanking and inflation was rising and we have found ourselves in so much dilemma where there seems to be so much hatred and frustration in our land, we pray and we need more than ever a Prince of Peace. We need a man who can bring the world together. And he's saying that, John is saying it's a man named Jesus who came to bring healing, who came to save the brokenhearted, who, who came to 
and wipe the tears from my eyes. I don't know about you, but in times like these, in times that we have seen, we need a Savior. Amen. We need somebody who can fix what is messed up. We need someone to straighten some things out that has gone wrong. We need some people who remind us that there is only one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one race, and that's called the human race. And we need to know that even though God has painted us with many different colors, ethnicity, economic backgrounds, we as Christians, he even prayed, Father, may they all be one as you and I are one. And if you want to know what heaven looks like, you don't have to wait till you die. I'm so glad that you've got a pastoral staff that has brought together a people, and all you need to do is look around this church, and that's what heaven's going to look like. I want you to know gospel choir, because even in heaven, while there will be some loud praising, singing, and rejoicing, you will have some white folks in that heavenly choir who's out here and who can't clap and sing. <laughs> opportunity to lead a group of pilgrims over to the Holy Land. And I was doing that because, as you heard in the introduction, I represent the cause of Sister Thea Bowman for canonization. And this was a fundraising trip because Thea herself had never gone to the Holy Land, so we had a, Father Norman, we had to take Thea to the Holy Land trip. And we brought her musical, uh, her, her musician, her accompanist, uh, Miss Veronica Down Dorsey's to lead the song, so we were singing the praises all over the Holy Land. And we went to the River Jordan, and, and people didn't think we were Catholic because we came in there, we, everybody had to put their white robes on, and we came in singing, Take me to the water, take me to the water, take me, take me to the water. Because Catholic folks were getting a little leery because our church teaching is that if you've been baptized once, you've been baptized. You know, some Protestant churches say if you were Catholic, they got to redo it. So it doesn't work sometimes if you join a Protestant. But if they come to our church, you say you've been baptized, as long as you've used that Trinitarian formula, it's all right with us. You are ready. You don't have to go back into the water. So I have to remind those Catholics that were on the trip that we were only doing a reenactment, a remembrance. I am not baptizing you again. We just took them all the way under in the River Jordan, and we brought them back up and praised God. And as we were finishing our tour, God came up to me and says, Father, he was up at the top of the hill by the banks of the Jordan, and he said, Father, there's a young man here, and he wants to be baptized. And so I brought him. He didn't have anybody, so we brought him down, and I asked him what his name was, and he said, my name is Joshua. And I said, have you ever been baptized before? And he said, no. And I got worried <laughs> because it wasn't going to be play or reenactment with him. <laughs> and, and so I looked at my fellow priest who was with me, a, a colleague who is Father Jeffrey Ott, who's a Dominican priest, a good friend of ours. And, and I looked at him, and Father Jeffrey looked at me like, what you going to do? <laughs> and I looked at him, and he looked at me like, what you going to do? <laughs> so I asked the young man, Joshua, I said, Joshua, do you know Jesus? And he says, I love Jesus. Mm. I love Jesus. I looked at Father Jeffrey, he looked at me, and we said, okay, we're going to have to take him under. He loves Jesus. <laughs> so we, we, we baptized him, and, and as he left, I says, Joshua, I want you to know you were just baptized in the Catholic faith. And so when you go back, where are you from? He said, California. So when you go back to California, find yourself a Catholic church. And Joshua was about 30, young 30-something-year-old man. 
turned around and looked at me, and he simply smiled. I asked the other pilgrims with us, did you see him? Because I wanted to talk to him when I got out of the water. And he says, it's as if he disappeared. We don't, we don't know what happened to him. So later that evening, I was asking those who took pictures, uh, uh, can I see the pictures? And Because I want to remember this day when I baptized Joshua. A picture was taken, and all that was shown there was Father Jeffrey and I, oh, and nobody else present. Oh, now, you may not believe me, and I didn't think your pastor believed me, so we called Father Jeffrey last night. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? And we confirmed that. When the word of God becomes real. I don't know about you, but all our lives, we are constantly entertaining God. You never know when Jesus will appear. You never know how he will come to us, but he certainly comes before us. And beloved, I don't know about you, but we have to understand the Lamb of God in God's kingdom is both realized in every act of compassion, in every act of charity, <coughs> Every selfless sacrifice we do, whenever our humanity becomes most humble and it resembles who God is, our kingdom, building up the kingdom, is built on the respect and honor we afford to all God's sons and daughters. Amen? Amen. It's how we treat one another. It's how we love one another. That's when we make God real. And as we are about to celebrate, tomorrow the birthday of my fraternity brother and Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. He once said this, somebody must have sense enough to meet hate with love. Somebody must have sense enough to meet physical force with soul force. If we will but try this way, we will be able to change these conditions. And yet, at the same time, with the hearts and souls of those who have kept these conditions alive, always, or as old as the insights of Jesus of Nazareth, and as modern as the techniques of Mahatma Gandhi, Martin said, there must be another way. I don't know about you, but in my 60 years of life, I know I don't look like that old, but I am. In my 60 years of life, my Lord, my God, has taught me what it means to know him. And I don't know about you, but if you've ever had a powerful experience of knowing the Lord, I'm here to tell you that there is a thing called this God. There's a this God in our lives who touches us and makes us whole. There's a this God who turns our lives around. I'm here to witness and testify there is this God that I know and you know who has turned my life around, who has loved me better than I could ever love myself. I want St. Peter Claver to know that I'm talking about this God. Amen. This God who zaps because he can cancel all our sins. Amen. 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 This God who yields and pours our <laughs> blessings that we don't have room enough to receive. I wish I had somebody say this God. Yeah. This God, because this God, nothing is ever hidden from him because he is able to x-ray and he sees everything. Somebody ought to say, this God. he visits us when we are never alone and makes us so we feel never alone. This God. He unites and pulls all of us back together again. This God. He teaches us lessons for life. This God. this God shelters us in a time of storm. I wish I had someone who would say, this God. this God revives us by blowing in us the very breath of life. This God. God quenches us like water in dry places. This God. Protects us with this God who we've has, gives us fire assurance so that we will never been be burned up. Somebody ought to say, this God. he's also got flood insurance so that we will never ever be drowned out. I wish I had. This God, this God enables us to overcome the snares of life. This God. Gives us the victory. This God. Nourishes us like he is the bread of life. This God. He heals us. He's the bomb in Gilead. This God. Loves us and gives us grace. 
upon grace. Keeps us when we don't have sense enough to keep ourselves. This God judges all the errors and, and loves us still the same. This God defends us like a lawyer in the courtroom. This God blesses our coming in and our going out. This God accepts us just as we are. This God let me tell you about this God. This God had one Trinitarian conversation about the state of the whole wide world. For this God loved us enough to send his son Jesus, the word made flesh and dwells among us. And this word took on one historical journey through 42 generations and one angelic announcement. This word took an undercover assignment in the womb of a 14-year-old virgin. This word took a no-vacancy sign at a local motel in one manger. In one night, heaven and earth came together singing. This word took a trip to Egypt and a 12-year-old boy gave his first trial sermon. This word took 30 years of carpentry and reading and listening and developing and learning and waiting. This word took 12 unlikely disciples and bid them to follow him. This word changed the taste of infected water and turned it into celebrating wine. Let me break it down for those who didn't understand what I just said. This man was able to take H2O and turn it into Merlot. <laughs> this word took 30 recorded miracles, three years of healing and teaching and preaching, three recordings of the resurrection of someone who was once dead, one calming of a raging sea. This word took five loaves and two fish and made a buffet dinner for 5,000 people. And one day, another day, he turned around and fed 4,000 people. This word took one meeting with two transfigured saints, one blessing of children, one parade for destiny. This word cried over Jerusalem, turned around and dried up his eyes and gave the money changers a piece of his mind. I want you to know this man, this word, took away all the sins of the world while a $10 betrayer ran away. This word took one garden prayer meeting, three sleeping watchmen, one losing plea battle with the father, one SWAT team arrest, one false charge, three kangaroo courts, one public hand washing, one patrol convicted killer, parole convicted killer, one long rock down the Via Della Rosa, one public stripping, 39 lashes, 72 thorns, one cross, three nails, one pierced side, one vinegar drink. This word took six execution hours, one broken heart, one world of sin, 10 disciple deserters, one disciple remained at the foot of cross. This word, the greater shepherd of the sheep took one sacrifice for the whole world, yeah. one empty tomb, one resurrection, ten post-resurrection appearances, one dispatch of the Holy Spirit. But this word, we need to know who he is because we know whose we are. We are followers of this God, this God. This Savior, this Redeemer, I don't know about anybody of this church, but he is the head of that church. And because of his spirit, because of his love for us, because of his love for you, we are building this church upon him. So that I no stand, and the gates of hell shall never, ever prevail against it. I wish I had a witness. Somebody say yeah. yeah. Is there anybody in here who knows that he is the head of your life? Say yeah. yeah. Is there anybody in here because you know him that no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper? Say yeah. yeah. I wonder if you know and if you can say as I point, behold. Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. It happens when 
this God, this word becomes real. Yes. Bishop John, all priests, deacons, religious, and leaders in the church. 
We pray for all who are called to serve the church in a special ministry, that their parish community recognize how each of us has different gifts of the Holy Spirit that can work for the good of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the church, we pray that we utilize our potential to be a light of inspiration to each other each time we gather at the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For every Christian denomination, we pray that God will gather each group together with, with sincerity and love as they seek the word of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Dean Bills, we pray for their safety as they continue with construction on our church and sanctuary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our military, we pray for our military leaders, their personnel, and their families, that God will keep them safe at all times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick and infirm, especially Brian Booth's aunt, Marilyn, Ted Rice, Norman and Marche Beckham, Stan Hardewitz, for healing of those with mental health issues. <coughs> Reva Feldman, Chester Cavanaugh, Nick Brody, Janice Adams, Joe Turley, Frank Foy, Tom Williams, John Ellery, Mary Overtree, Michael Dickerson, Jay Blanton, Terry Henning, Bill Dodson, Frank Brown, Leonard Nelson, Paul Baumgartner, Josie and Danny Jones, Yvonne Weathers, Ralph Whitehouse, Joe and Ada Coconut, Brittany Curry, Pauline Barber, and, and Angie Gillis. We pray that they soon experience the healing ways of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For all who have died, especially Tim Gurton, Jennifer Dunnigan, our police, our military, family, friends, firefighters, innocent lives cut short from abortions, racist sites, suicide, <clears throat> auto accidents, drug overdose, seasonal storms, and gun violence. We pray that they are soon granted eternal life in the peaceful arms of Jesus and all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For everyone gathered here, we pray that we keep Jesus close to our hearts and hope he will remain with us forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we have gathered in your name today to do your will. We ask you to open our ears that we may hear and may speak to you, and our hearts so that we may show, uh, that you may show us how to serve you. Hear our prayers this day, those spoken and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We ask these things through Christ our Lord and our Savior, let the church say. Amen. Amen. The offertory here will be number 240 on Jordan's Bank, 240.
these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity to gather Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed of the Apostles, <clears throat> glorious martyrs, St. Peter Claver, our patron, and St. Mark de Porta, St. Catherine Dux, our co-patron and patroness, and with all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Beloved, we are all witnesses that it is through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Lord, I am not worthy that you should turn on my roof. 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into myself. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you, never to be permitted or separated from you. Amen. 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 That prayer was written by St. Alphonse the Glory, founder of the Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> the communion hymn will be number 757, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart, 757.
Church, let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by the one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our church announcements. Good morning and welcome to each of you worshiping with us today. If you're worshiping for the first time with you, please stand and tell us who you are and where you're from. Let's start with you. Uh, Kyle and Rebecca Covert, we're visiting from Indianapolis. <laughs> p.m. Thursday at 4.30. Our CCD and CYO resumes this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. And we continue to ask you to remain safe while you're on church property as construction continues. Monday is Martin Luther King Day celebrations and there are many celebrations around town beginning this evening at Central Christian Church where Deacon Eddie will do a prayer for the beginning of their service. And there's information on the table as you leave today. And thanks to everyone who helped uh, the CAACC put on our day of reflection yesterday. And for those of you who attended and helped in any way, thanks to each of you. It was a very successful day. And thanks to, especially to Father Maurice, who hails from Louisiana and came to be with us on that particular day and to the as well. Thank you. And on January 29th through February 4th is going to be Catholic Schools Week. And our school is St. Peter and Paul downtown, and we will help them celebrate Catholic Schools Week on the weekend of 29th. We'll be. Days 15, so the week of the 29th, we'll hit that particular Sunday, so yes. Thanks again. Again, just a reminder, tomorrow uh, downtown at Central uh, Bank Center, there will be an opportunity for the Freedom March, if you'd like to join me, I'll be gathering with folks from Lexington Catholic, uh, Knights and Ladies of Peter Claver, St. Peter Claver members, uh, or your friends, uh, at 1230 at the front steps of St. Paul's, and we'll walk on down and join everyone else together. But it'd be a great day. It's not a day off, it's a day on, amen? Amen. Uh, also want to give a shout out to uh, St. Peter Claver member uh, Josie Murray and her work with the Dance Blue. It's for the, it's a dance marathon that uh, Lincoln Catholic is the first high school to ever join uh, UK in, in their opportunity to raise money and awareness for kids with cancer. Uh, Josie could stand up real quick. Uh, I want to thank her for her hard work. They raised $35,000 uh, for kids with cancer. Thank you so much. Again, uh, high school youth, if you need a youth group, we'd love to have you. Um, if you don't have, if you haven't gone yet, we'd love to host you this Wednesday at 6 o'clock following the 5 o'clock mass. There'll be food and fellowship and fun. Uh, parents, if, if if we're not forming them, who's forming them? Amen? Amen. Uh, and it's just, again, it's only an hour and a half, and it's a lot of fun, and it's a good grip. Get group, get group of people gathering. So again, come on down this Wednesday at 6 o'clock upstairs, and it's going to be a good time. 
especially those little ones and those making their sacraments this year. We're excited they'll be in the new church for their sacraments this year. It's going to be an exciting year uh, together. Amen? Amen? Again, thank you for a choir. Thank you for a brother from the same Holy Mother. Uh, <laughs> thank you for all your energy and your spirit and your love and your wisdom and knowledge that helped us to have an incredible uh, moment, momentum as we move, as, as the church moving into the new church. Thank you for kickstarting that. And it's real special. We haven't had anything like this in two and a half years or three Amen. since COVID. So I just want to praise God for you and your presence with us. Great to be with you. Let's stand for our final blessing. Father Norman, I want to take the opportunity to thank you and all the people of St. Peter Flavor for the love, the hospitality, and the joy you've shown me. Uh, I keep you in my heart as I go back to New Orleans, and I will pray for you, and I ask that you also pray for me as well. Amen. And on behalf of the men of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, we would like to today to acknowledge that today is the Founders Day of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. So all the AKAs, we want to wish you a happy Founders Day. Thank you. I know there's at least one in the house. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Oh, yeah, God bless you. Yeah, you know, do that too. Almighty <laughs> God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be God. To honor Dr. Martin Luther King, the, the last song will be number 652, We Shall Overcome, 652.